Morning, everyone. Um, let me introduce to you um, Brian May. He's talking about uh, Robotica, uh, made for um, kids of, um, with um, autistic or autism. Um, he's a Debian developer and a um, Python programmer as well. So please give a warm welcome to Brian May. Hello. Thank you for the introduction. First, a disclaimer, I may have accidentally put my left sock on my right foot. If this causes any anxiety, you're invited to leave now. And uh, also, this, in no way, this is a personal project and no way uh, reflects uh, my employee. First. So, uh, we have three uh, carers of uh, three kids. Uh, one uh, eight-year-old girl and uh, two 12-year-old uh, twins. And uh, we believe that they uh, have pathological demand avoidance, which means that uh, they want to uh, remain in control constantly. And if you ask them to do something, this uh, causes anxiety. And as a result, they just cannot do it. This is a bit different from the uh, typical case, which you see in everyday kids, where if a uh, child just doesn't want to do it because, well, they've got better things to do. But this is where they uh, actively try and uh, resist, sometimes hours later, <laughs> uh, simple everyday to day tasks. And uh, because of the anxiety, if they don't realise it would be, uh, it would take five seconds to do something which uh, instead. Uh, often choose to uh, debate it hours later if they should do it or not. And uh, naturally, this causes uh, lots of uh, stress. As an uh, example, you might uh, ask the kids to, uh, say, clean their teeth or put their pyjamas on. And uh, they walk down the uh, passageway and uh, on the way they see a uh, cupboard door. And uh, a cupboard door, well, you can open it and you can close it and uh, you can open it again. Uh, but after a while, this gets boring. What you really want to do, what's, what the real excitement is, is uh, getting your twin brother to get into this cupboard so you can lock him into the cupboard. But unfortunately, this doesn't work when your twin brother point blank uh, refuses to get in the cupboard for reasons that are entirely obvious. Why wouldn't you go into a cupboard so your brother can lock you in? <laughs> so anyway, this uh, causes uh, anxiety because uh, you're no longer in control. Your brother won't do what you ask him to do. And uh, as a result, all kids end up arguing and uh, the adults start getting worried that you're making a lot of noise for the neighbours and they start uh, yelling at the kids. And we have uh, complete chaos. <laughs> uh, so yeah, another, as an example, imagine you're a uh, window cleaner and you're scared of heights. And uh, the task at hand is pretty simple. You just wash a window. Everyone knows how to wash a window. But uh, your anxiety levels are really high because you're scared of the uh, heights and you're looking down at how high you are and you just cannot function. You cannot do anything because uh, the anxiety is so high that it, it just can't do anything. So uh, how do you deal with this? Well, the uh, first step is uh, try not to get stressed yourself because uh, anxiety is contagious. If the uh, kids are anxious, they, get, uh, they start yelling. And uh, this, in turn, gets the adults uh, anxious. And the an adults start yelling at the kids. And suddenly, the kids now have another source of anxiety. And uh, the whole aim of the uh, thing was to remove the anxiety, not to increase the anxiety. And it's completely backfired. So uh, unfortunately, like it or not, a schedule is important for the adults. You want to make sure the kids get to bed in t on time. You want to make sure they can, they can uh, wake up on time. And you want to make sure that they uh, can catch the school bus on time. And this, this is non-negotiable. You can't just uh, have the bus wait an extra half an hour because the uh, kids didn't want to get up. 
So how do you stick to a schedule and every trivial issue becomes a huge battle? So uh, my uh, idea was to have automatic announcement system uh, throughout the house. So what's the requirements? Well, it must have a name, the uh, difficult point for any uh, project, and I named this Robotica. And it must be r robust and reliable. You don't want the announcements suddenly to uh, stop working because Wi-Fi went down or because the internet went down. And uh, it, ideally, it's got to deal with the uh, complicated uh, scheduling system. Well, for uh, school days, uh, some days aren't school days, some days kids have to see specialists, etc., etc. So here's a demonstration of a uh, typical announcement. It is time to listen to this message. It is time to listen to this message. So as you can see, it's a uh, Raspberry Pi, Pi system uh, connected to uh, two speakers. Alpha speakers have uh, large flashing type lights, which uh, kids really like, although it would uh, really annoy me myself having these brightly lit lights when I'm trying to sleep, but the kids really like it. And uh, it uh, comes up with uh, scheduled announcements every at uh, every uh, event that's required. So um, the overall design is uh, these four fundamental uh, blocks, which I'll talk about in detail. And uh, some uh, basic concepts, you have the uh, concept of the location, so you can have different announcements at different locations through the uh, house. And uh, you've got uh, actions, and an action is a JSON encodable field that describes an event, and uh, ex such as uh, what message to produce or if it should flash the lights, and uh, it attempts to describe what has happened. So for inputs, it's a pluggable uh, architecture system. It's uh, at the moment, we support uh, MQTT and HTTP. This just allows uh, overall control of the system and uh, ability to uh, try and find out what it's doing. Then you have a uh, output from to the scheduler, and uh, it's a, a JSON response. And in FISC, this is a uh, event that uh, describes an action that should happen in five minutes' time, a time of event. The scheduler is also responsible for a scheduling offense and uh, timer offense. It can receive actions on demand as well as the schedule, and uh, the schedule itself is to be discussed later. And an example of uh, the output of the scheduler it's a list of locations and a list of actions that uh, need to be executed at a particular point in time. So uh, the immediate action is to play a message. In five minutes, it will be time. And uh, then in five minutes' time, it will play another message, beep, 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 it is time. Uh, this is based on the uh, initial event. So the executor is responsible for processing a given action across multiple locations. It maintains a queue for every uh, location, meaning if uh, some locations execute it faster than others, it's not going to slow the other locations down. For every queue, it looks for new entries and forwards the next one to the output. And uh, you get a message, and this message is specific for one location, and uh, it's one action. And after five minutes, you get the beep, 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 and it's time action. Now the outputs. How oh, I'm going ahead of myself here. The outputs, it's also a plug-in architecture. It's, uh, I've got plugins now for audio, MPD, LIFX, for lights, MPD is uh, for music player, to, uh, for music to wake for kids up. MQTT, so you can forward uh, events onto 
say, a mobile phone and have them processed externally. And uh, X Windows is the latest one I've been experimenting with. And the exact same output is given to every plugin, and the plugin decides exactly how it uh, should process the action. And for scheduler, how to define a schedule? It seems easy. It's not so easy in practice. So first attempt, I have the YAML file, and uh, it's a series of uh, times, and it process, and it's got an action for each time. But different days have different requirements. There's some days are school days, some days are weekends. So I've got this uh, idea where you can define different types of days and you can define criteria. So uh, school days takes a uh, list of days of weeks, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, which I ran out of room to fit here. Or you can have specialist days which uh, define a list of dates and the specialist days override for school days. So you don't need to uh, worry about trying to exclude the specialist days from the school day rules, which would be rather complicated. And uh, we try to avoid uh, duplicating uh, common uh, routines. So the uh, wake up routine is defined as a template. So uh, whenever you use it, you just define a base time and uh, it adds a base time to all those times there. And uh, it's a lot simpler not having to repeat yourself. And I've also, in my modern iter iteration, designed a, a split design. So you can have a schedule process that uh, sends uh, for MQTT the uh, desired actions to various output processes. So our setup, we've got one Raspberry Pi and speaker per bedroom and uh, living room. We've got a schedule for waking up. We've got a schedule for taking turns at the Xbox. Unfortunately, that you know, hasn't worked out so well because what typically happens is that the uh, kids never start playing the Xbox at the first turn on time. And after that, the delays keep accumulating and uh, it becomes more and more out of sync it would be good for if the uh, kids did actually stick to the schedule. And the schedule for bedtime routines, such as cleaning teeth, getting pyjamas on, book time as they call it, which is anything but book time, and uh, talk time, which is more like yell time. So uh, how do you deploy this to all the virtual, or, or for Raspberry Hive Pies throughout the house? Initially, I had this scripted virtual ENF idea, but I uh, ended up finding it clumsy and it didn't necessarily guarantee that all the virtual ENFs across the uh, Raspberry Pis were in sync. So I thought, uh, why not use Docker? But Docker is a very heavyweight solution. It requires uh, copying large images across the Raspberry Pis, which are uh, very inefficient at dealing with. So another solution I looked at was Snap, which looked very good initially. However, under Debian uh, Stable, I wasn't able to get it to work reliably. And I asked about this on uh, Stack Overflow. And I was basically told uh, you shouldn't be using any of these approaches anyway, <laughs> which wasn't really very helpful. So I ended up uh, looking at PEX, which allows you to compile Python into a single executable file containing all the uh, pip dependencies. The downside is that the uh, stack traces are no longer as clean as they used to be, but at the moment it seems to be the best solution. So I've also been playing around with Android. At the moment, uh, so I've been using Tasker, which is very not open source software and uh, MQTT client, which is open source software and the uh, upstream maintenance is very good and responsive. 
However, an entirely open source solution would be uh, much better, and particularly one which is which doesn't require sharing task code, which isn't really that convenient. So X Windows, I've got an experimental Python async IO TK based client. Now this still needs more work. But at the moment I've got it, so when a message comes in, it uh, turns on the display and it shows the message and it stays on for about 30 seconds and then it turns the display off. And I've uh, also got this idea of a uh, remote control unit, which is a uh, ESP32 based system running MicroPython. I've got the software done. It's, I still need to uh, 3D print for your case. And uh, it's got four buttons of different colors and 16 pixel lettering, which hopefully the kids will like. And that, that will mean they'll be able to uh, interact with the system directly. And hopefully this will uh, mean they feel more in control of the process. And uh, that's by current 3D design. So uh, the, the uh, evaluation, does it work? For the kids? Well, uh, no, the kids just ignore the announcements. It would, I've had some idea, suggestions on how to uh, try and uh, fix this. I should try and gamify it. I've, uh, add some sort of challenge which the kids have to uh, push a button or something. That uh, means they've uh, met the requirement. And after the week, they uh, get some sort of reward. I've still got to uh, think about these. But for adults, it's uh, very useful because the uh, adults get the reminders and it helps, helps keep track of the time. Am I running late? Am I running early? That sort of thing. So yes, it does, it does help. Although you have to be careful, sometimes adults can uh, tune out the announcements, which doesn't really help. So uh, if you're running late, it gives you an idea of just how late you're running. Unfortunately, when you're running late, uh, the kids tend to slow down, possibly as a result of the adults being uh, an anxious and it makes the schedule less useful. Once you meet one, once you fail to meet one, you're going to uh, fail to meet the uh, subsequent items. So an ongoing issue, do we make the schedule idealistic, what we want the kids to be able to achieve, or do we make it realistic? What, they, what we think they can meet in practice with lots of padding. Making the schedule too realistic, well, it's uh, that's the issue that uh, people just ignore the uh, announcements because they have no meaning. A realistic schedule means that there's no motivation for the uh, kids to try and uh, improve and keep on schedule. So future work, uh, well, more, st more stuff. We can have more plugins to do various things. Got more tests. Tests are good to ensure that you don't actually break things. There's some uh, reliability issues I've been noticing lately, especially with MQTT, which uh, I need to actually look at. And documentation to uh, assist with uh, newcomers would be good. And at the moment, if, the, uh, if you upload a uh, schedule which has uh, syntax errors, it will uh, upload to all the uh, robotic pies instantly and uh, cause them all to fail instantly. <laughs> so ideally, there needs to be a lint type syntax checker to uh, ensure that uh, you're uploading something that is actually valid. And uh, when I did the trial run of this talk, I was uh, had the suggestion, like I mentioned before, that uh, somehow we should be able to gamify it and uh, this might actually encourage the kids to uh, keep to the schedule if there's some sort of rewards for meeting for your schedule items. And another uh, suggestion I got, which 
I still considering is somehow integrated with the uh, Google Calendar, so you can uh, update your Google Calendar and uh, it will uh, automatically synchronize with uh, Robotica. So you can, uh, it might make it easier to uh, update the schedules. So, um, at the moment, uh, each output can only have one scheduler controlling it. Otherwise, if you have uh, multiple schedulers controlling one output, you'll end up with uh, multiple events, one for each scheduler. And ideally, uh, we'd like some way of uh, having multiple schedulers for one output. So if one scheduler fails, you've got several other schedulers that can uh, take over. And I'm sure there's going to be improvements to how we deploy things. And uh, of course, the ESP32 based robot control uh, may be an important part to this gamify thing. And uh, it would be good if we could uh, install this on, uh, say, Linux computers. At the moment, though, there's a problem that. Uh, sometimes the announcements wait until the uh, users finish playing YouTube videos and uh, you get a whole heap of uh, messages all at once and all very late, which doesn't really help. Okay. So it's open source. Uh, it's available on GitHub. And uh, contributions and pull requests are appreciated. And I can give you, should be able to give you a demonstration. I'll just magnify that. So this is uh, my private repository full of uh, hacks which I haven't uh, included in the uh, official repository of stuff that is uh, specific to my, uh, my personal computer or my setup. So I'll run the daemon. For some reason, my MQTT server likes to give out this illegal message when I first start. I'm not quite sure what's going on there because it does it every time I start. And here's a uh, script. Oh, maybe it's a bit too big. Yep, that's a script message that uh, basically uh, constructs a uh, JSON package packet. And it sends it from Mosquito. So message. Hello world. Hello world. Which is a bit loud. I might just turn that down a bit. And because my phone's connected to the same server, I can also uh, send a message via my phone. It is time. It is time. And for a uh, script that does timer offense, oh, it's still a bit big. So this script uh, sends a uh, bit more complicated blog, JSON blob that sets a timer first. And uh, like for demonstration, it uh, says it gives a message. before the uh, time's up, and then it gives another message. Oh, 
timer. So it will make it short, one minute. It's time to finish the... Oops. In one minute it will be time to finish the talk. In one minute it will be time to finish the talk. So if the timer gives that ding every minute, and uh, when it's finished it will uh, come up with that uh, finishing message. So does anyone have any questions? Uh, yes? So the question was, are the kids involved in, uh, se in uh, how this works and setting it up? Well, ideally they would be, but so far I haven't had any interest yet. <laughs> any more questions? Beep, beep, beep. Just it is time to finish the talk. Beep, beep, beep. It is time to finish the talk. <laughs> uh, sorry about that, continue. <laughs> have, you, have you had any ideas on how to change that ideal schedule to the realistic schedule where the realistic starts out being in the real world way too lax and then the ideal is where you want to work towards? So, gamifying all the buttons or anything to. Right, yeah, that's. So if the question was, has said, have I uh, considered how to uh, slowly converge from the idealist schedule to the uh, realistic schedule? Uh, possibly through gamification. Unfortunately, I have this is something that requires more research, and I haven't actually considered it yet, so yet. Uh, yes? So if somebody's, so I've got a kid the same kind of issue where you're sitting there and you've got a certain amount of time on the computer. Now, when he starts the computer, he's supposed to set his timer, you know, 30 minutes. <laughs> when that timer goes off, it's supposed to stop. Um, it's an external timer to the computer because it's difficult to make a computer do work when you're doing, as you said, in the YouTube or something like that. Um, if you talk about any concepts of turning that into a that start stop issue as you said sometimes the schedule gets behind because it says a gap be 3 p.m. or whatever a certain time but where they can do a you can say start this event with a button or something simple on the computer oh okay, yeah the question was has there been any thought to uh, being able to start and stop schedules uh, when uh, kids aren't uh, keeping up to uh, the ideal uh, time and actually, this was uh, an issue that was uh, something that was uh, raised during my preliminary talk, where it was suggested maybe there'd be some button that delays the schedule for five minutes. And uh, the uh, suggestion from the audience just then was that you start and stop the schedule as required. Now, uh, these are interesting ideas. They probably require more consideration and more thought, but yeah, it may actually something like this may actually solve some of the problems. Thank you. <laughs> Are there any more questions at the back? A comment really is a much more um, a simple system that I had at home which would uh, use IP tables to, to increase packet drop and packet latency. <laughs> 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 I definitely could have that output plug-in, that uh, updated IP tables rules that uh, did that sort of thing. <laughs> but yeah, the uh, comment was, uh, uh, the suggestion was that uh, you can update IP tables to uh, introduce packet loss when uh, the time's up on uh, the uh, computer or the tablet and uh, if a child uh, presumably eventually gets frustrated and stops using the device. Um, just a question on a probably more personal note around the, the situation of the children. Um, the specialists that you're seeing, do they see any 
resolution for that in this respect, or is this going to be an ongoing uh, problem? So if the uh, question is, if we, what do the specialists say? Is there going to likely to be any resolution? Uh, our best bet is, unfortunately, if this is going to be an ongoing issue throughout their lives. So, uh, yeah, we just have to deal with it the best way we can and try to keep the anxiety levels down. And uh, that's probably the uh, most best way to work for a long-term solution to keeping the anxiety levels down as much as we can. So I'm uh, not quite sure. Um, kudos to you for the work that you're doing. Ah, yeah. So the comment was uh, kudos to the uh, work you're doing with it. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Any further questions for Brian? So the suggestion was that I uh, use a shock collar to uh, yeah, <laughs> enforce compliance. Unfortunately, I think this will just add to the anxiety level, so it won't actually uh, achieve <laughs> anything. The uh, Judge Rottenberg syndrome in the US actually does that sort of stuff. They like to shock, shock on all the city kids to compliance. So it's been done. Does it work? Of course not. <laughs> 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 so, what was the name? Uh, Judge Rottenberg Centre. Okay. Was, uh, for, um, uh, the, the, they specialise in ABA and other nasty therapies. And um, one of the things someone did one stage was um, gave them a, a prank call and said, I'm, I'm a director from the centre, uh, please uh, shock this child for me. And they got out of the zapper and started zapping them. Okay. So, Russell Koch has just mentioned that uh, Judge Rottenberg in uh, USA uses shock therapy. On, uh, to try and enable compliance with kids. Autistic but kids. Autistic yeah. kids, uh, but the conclusion seems to be it doesn't actually work. That's inhumane as well. And, and it's, it's, yeah, a, a really it's not humane or legal either. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes? Uh, before you consider the solutions like that, remember one day your kid will be stronger and smarter. Yeah. <laughs> so comment um, for the audience. Uh, Remember, if you're trying to, to uh, do a solution like this, one day your kids will be stronger and smarter than you are. And probing robots to uh, remind you what you should be doing. And probing robots to remind you of what you should be doing. <laughs> Any further questions or comments, Brian? No? Well, thank you very much for your talk. It was um, very good. Yeah, thank you. <laughs>